Hey everyone! Today we're going to take a look at how to take a sign like this and turn it into a cute accent piece for your house. Stay tuned! Thanks for watching! So we're going to get started with the text for our design. And I'm going to be doing it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm going to do the text in a couple different lines here. Um, just so that I can use a couple different fonts. Uh, so the first font I'm going to use is one of my favorites. Um, and this is a Cricut Access font. Um, so if you don't have the Access, then you can just pick a different font that's already on your system. Um, but for this, I'm going to start off with that font. And then I'm just going to go ahead and type out my next words and then we can change the font for that. I'm going to do a different font in the middle. Um, and this one is actually another one of my favorite fonts. Um, American Standard. Um, I just think it's a really nice, basic, cute font. And there we go. I wanted something really different so that it kind of stands out. And then I'm going to go back and do the last little section, time of the year. And I'm doing two spaces in between each word just to put a little bit more space in between each word. And then I'm going to put this back on the holiday font. I think it goes really cute with this design. Alright, so I've got them kind of spaced out, but I'm going to mess with that just a little bit for what I want here. And this is just really preference of what you want it to look like. There's no specific special formula of what to do, it's just when it looks good. <laughs> um, so I want the wonderful, just for what I want, to be a little bit bigger, and then... I'm going to have the top and bottom sections of text be a little bit smaller just to make a cute design here. And sometimes it just really takes a little bit of fiddling. So if you get it and then you're like, eh, I don't really like that, you can change it until you decide that you do. All right. And now I'm going to get this top one lined up as well. And now I'm going to curve the top and the bottom sections of text just to make the design a little, just add some dimension to it. Okay, and I'm going to do the bottom the same way, coming up to the curve. And this is why I do um, two spaces in between each word. You could type each word separately, but then it doesn't let you do the curve like this. And I really wanted to do the curve. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to weld um, each of the text in that font so that all the letters form into mostly one piece. Um, if you don't do that, it will cut each individual line and I don't want those letters to be separate. All right, and now we can line everything up. Okay, so that just centers it so you know everything's right in the middle there how you want it. I'm just going to pull that down just a tiny bit. And that's looking pretty good, I think. Alright, so next I'm going to come over here to Images. And I'm going to add some pine needles. And it, these are again, some of these are going to be, most of them actually are going to be um, access images. But you can upload your own image if you don't have access, or you can usually search for free images. But I found this one earlier that I thought I really liked. 
And I guess I hit cancel there by accident. There we go. So it actually came up with two, which is perfect, but I am going to put them in a different design. So I'm going to ungroup these so that I can arrange them how I want. And this is just a nice feature. You can kind of turn everything. You can break images up that are in here to be something a little bit different if it's not exactly what you want, but it's close. Um, so this is a great feature. It just really lets you customize what you want to be doing. So I'm going to combine these as best I can into one image and I'm going to weld them. So now that is one image and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. All right. And then I want to do one of these on this other side as well. So I'm going to duplicate that. There we go. And then I'm going to flip this as well, just so that it will be the mirror image on the other side. There we go. Cool. And now we're just going to select the two, um, just the two green pieces, not that part in the middle. And I'm just going to make sure that those are aligned as well. And we can kind of set them up to where they are even and in the location that I want them to be. And then I'm going to just group those so that they move together. All right can align everything here again and it was already pretty good but there's always a good thing to double check so if it's off just a little bit it can kind of mess you up all right so I'm gonna take everything here highlight it all and group it Cool. Looks good. Everything's moving together. And then the last thing I need to do here is just the way the mats are. I need to actually rotate this just so that it'll print on the 12 by 24 mat. And that looks pretty good. Just double checking that it's the dimensions that I want it to be. And it looks good. So I'm going to attach it so that it will print just with that exact spacing that I've done. And then we can make our image. All right. And it's just giving me that message that I need the larger mat, which is what I'm planning to use. And I like to move my image just a little bit further away from the corner when I'm going to be using it as a stencil for paint. It gives you a little extra space around the edges when you do that. And then we are pretty much all set. So it will connect here and we will be good to go to cut out this stencil. All right, so I've got everything cut out and now I'm going to take my weeding tool and weed all of the letters out to form our stencil. So I've got that weeded out. Next, I'm going to take my transfer tape, and this is just a regular grip transfer tape. I don't recommend the strong grip for just plain vinyl. So I am going to peel this off. And there's a couple ways that you can do this, but especially on a larger piece, I have found it to be easiest to kind of roll it into a taco shape 
and then start in the middle and push down like that. So I'm going to take my scraper and just go over that. You just want to get out all the bubbles in here. That's pretty good. I'm going to put this to the side. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to prep the sign. Now this is already a pre-finished sign, but I'm just going to do one quick sanding of the top of it. This just helps make sure that you don't get any bleeding when you're putting your paint on. So this is actually 600 grit sandpaper. You probably don't need to use this high of a grit, but that's just what I had. 200, 220 would be fine. All right, so I'm just gonna give this a quick sanding. All right, and I'm just gonna wipe off that dust. Okay, and I actually feel a huge difference in the top of this, how smooth it is. So definitely a good move to do that. So now that that is done, I'm going to bring my stencil back. And then I'm just gonna peel it off of this. And uh, we are going to very carefully here peel off the backing of this. And you know what, I think before I do that, I may just trim this down a little bit. I'm not gonna trim it too much because I do like to have a little bit extra around the edges when you're doing a stencil just so that if you overshoot a little with the paint it's not a big deal. Alright. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off and when you do this just go slow. This is honestly probably my least favorite part of the entire thing, but just go slow and you will be fine. And once you've got it down, Gonna take your scraper and get it on there really well. And just one more plug for this. Make sure you're using removable vinyl for your stencils. And I am going to Trim this just a bit more at the bottom. I've got a little extra there. And now I'm just going to peel up the transfer tape part of this. And again, on this, just you want to go slow. Alright, that was a little more painful than usual. 
but I'm just going to take my scraper and go over these edges. You especially want to make sure there's no air bubbles right around your letters or else your paint is very likely to bleed. Some people will use Mod Podge or something similar to get over their stencil before they put the paint on. That has not worked well for me in the past. Um, sometimes the layers dry too quickly and then the stencil gets stuck and peels up some of the paint with it when you try to take it off. So I'm not saying that's not the way to go for you, but for me that has not worked well. So next we are going to go ahead and paint. So I'm going to use a couple different paint colors for this. Some people will make multiple stencils for that, which is not necessarily a bad idea. I just don't want to wait for it to dry in between coats right now. Um, so we are going to get started. And I just put mine on a paper plate. It's honestly probably way more than I needed. And to apply my paint, I actually use makeup sponges. These are just from Dollar Tree. It's great because you get a big package of them and they last a while. And you don't have to worry about cleaning anything after. You could just use one for each color. So, here we go. And I just do a up and down dabbing type of motion. All right, that is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get ready to peel off this stencil. Super cute. I'm gonna let it dry a little more and then hang it up. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you like how the sign turned out. Leave us a comment, a like, or a share if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more crafting tips and tricks. Thanks for watching Deb's Joyful Designs. See you next time.